Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about managing reloads on the handgun. Handguns run out of ammunition, that's just a fact of shooting. Uh, you're gonna shoot and you're gonna reach your magazine capacity and plus your one in the chamber if that's how you roll and then the gun's gonna go to slide lock and you're gonna have to perform a reload. That's one situation in which a reload can occur. Now, statistically speaking, when it comes to self-defense shooting, because I'm always self-defense minded, it's very unlikely for you in a self-defense shooting, especially those of you not in law enforcement, to actually work to a reload, to actually work to a slide lock reload, which means no matter what the capacity of your gun is, be it 6, 7, 15, 28 rounds, it is unlikely that you're going to fire the number of rounds that you would need in order to, for that, and that weapon, be it revolver, semi-automatic, or whatever, and we're gonna talk specifically about semi-automatics here, uh, for that weapon to reach slide lock, meaning you've exhausted every single round that you had in the magazine. That is statistically unlikely. The thing about statistics, though, is they're super awesome unless they happen to you. So if you are one of those people who find yourself in an unfortunate situation where you do have to reload your gun, be it because of slide lock or for whatever other reason, maybe it's malfunction induced or something like that, then being proficient at it and understanding the wins, the whys, and the hows is pretty important. Uh, Reloading, especially on the handgun, um, but on the rifle as well, uh, is one of those topics that just, it's been beat to death and then revived and then beat to death again and then revived. And we've got some interesting terminology that's been developed over the years. One of the, one of the, per, my personal favorites, and I use the word favorite with a great degree of satire and, and sarcasm, is a lull in the gunfight. You're supposed to reload your gun when you have a lull in the gunfight. I hate that term, I hate that phrase, because it presupposes that you know when the lull is going to end or when the lull is actually occurring. Um, if there's an exchange of gunfire between two or more individuals and, and you're on the receiving and the giving end and you take go to cover or something like that or maybe you find some concealment or maybe they just stop shooting for a second. How long do you know if that's going to last? Like do you know it's going to last three, four, five seconds? Is this the lull? Are, guys, are we in the lull? Can we have an agreement here like just go ahead and reload our guns and get back to it? I don't like that term. Um, my personal feeling, my philosophy on reloading the handgun is uh, do it like you mean it every single time, no matter how administrative it may be, and gas up every opportunity you get. Uh, and I say opportunity because just applying some critical thinking to a situation, if I've sought cover or I've gone to slide lock, which one is preferable for a reload? I would prefer to reload the firearm before slide lock occurs. Uh, there are two general topics or general techniques I should say that are taught when it comes to reloading that slide lock reload which is also known as an emergency reload which I would consider slide lock to be an emergency or there is what's called a tactical reload when you have a lull in the gunfight you're going to top off your gun because you don't know how many rounds you fired and that's absolutely correct I just don't like the terminology of tactical reload um, I consider that to be an emergency reload so my terminology is a little bit different if I go to slide lock, slide lock reload can also be called emergency reload. Again, we get into terminology, we get down to the minutia of it, and we, we start to get confused by what some people call something and some people call something now. So I'm just going to do it like this. I'm going to talk about two different ways to reload your gun based on the condition that the firearm is in. Now, of course, before we get into that, we do have to talk a little bit about gear. What is the capacity of the firearm you carry? If that capacity is not two digits, then you definitely need to be carrying a second magazine. And when I say second magazine, I mean the one in the gun is one, and the one that you should carry in your pocket or on your belt or wherever wherever you can easily, most easily accessible, access it based on the way that you dress, either by choice or occupation, um, that's your number two magazine. Uh, if you can bear it, you can carry three, or you can take that one, that, sec that, that spare magazine, and increase its capacity by adding an extended base pad or something like that. My personal everyday carry is a Glock 17. That Glock 17 has a flush magazine in it for concealment purposes, just because it does stick out a little bit. I mean, it's it's a struggle to conceal a 17 anyway, because it is a full-size handgun. So I use the 17 round magazine. I have one in the chamber, so that gives me 18 rounds in the gun. That's a lot of ammunition, hopefully more ammunition than I would ever need in a self-defense shooting. But my spare magazine is a, an additional 17 round magazine with an extended floor plate, adding more ammunition to the fight, so to speak. So, uh, Depending on the way I'm dressed, I can either get away with a plus three or a plus five. I've had my spare magazine pouch, this particular one is Guncraft. I've had it made specifically to where it sits lower in the belt line, not nearly as low as the gun does, so obviously it's not going to be a comfort issue sitting down because the gun's already sitting lower than this pouch. And it gives me the ability to conceal this, this particular case. I've got a, a m and magazine. Uh, it's got a it's 17 round capacity and then I've got a plus five on it. That gives me a whole lot of ammunition in the event that I need to work to a spare magazine. I carry my spare magazine midline of the body. Uh, I do carry appendix. Um, 
when I do carry concealed, obviously duty carry is, is on the hip. But even when I'm in a duty belt, I still try to work my spare ammunition to the first occupiable real estate on my duty belt or my gear. That way I'm always reloading from center line of the body. One, it's, easily, it's easier to access in multiple body positions. And the second reason being, uh, it's easier to access in the unlikely but possible event that I have to reload the gun one-handed or I have to work the entire firearm with my right hand. Now, I am default left-handed when it comes to handgun. Um, that only matters uh, in the way that I'm going to release the slide on the gun. Uh, as a left-handed shooter, even with an ambidextrous release, I've been shooting right-handed guns so long that I don't use left-handed controls applied to these guns. So I keep my magazine release on the same side, even though it's reversible, um, and I don't mess with uh, ambi releases. I'm still going to use my index finger uh, to release the slide, whereas when I shoot right-handed, I'm going to basically use my thumb. So right or left hand, I'm still using the same side of the gun to release the magazine. That's a personal problem for me. But when we get into the technique of actually going through the reloading process, um, you're going to have to follow along based on the way that you release the slide. Um, those of you that are slingshotting, you can keep doing that, but you are adding time uh, to the equation. And the whole gross versus fine motor skills is something I'm also going to address briefly because I think there's some misconceptions about that as well. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the reloading procedure. Now the first conditions for which a reload needs to occur is the firearm runs out of ammunition. Um, regardless of capacity, I've reached a point when I, I literally get the slide lock. So I'm shooting at some point because I'm probably not counting my rounds, the gun is going to let me know in one way or another that it has run out of ammunition. Now the slide is locked to the rear, but maybe I didn't initially see that and I go for that next trigger press. I've got a dead trigger. Your dead trigger is going to feel different based on the operation of your gun, be it double action, single action, single action only, um, or different striker fired variations. This is the M&P. Uh, the trigger feels springy. It's still got some spring to it. It's not technically a dead trigger, but the slide is going to lock. My focus point is going to come back. It's going to let me know that slide's locked. I may even do a visual verification as I tilt the gun in. Based on your gun type, here's where crucial errors can be made, and I see this in classes all the time. Um, two or three students per class in a handgun class are going to have this problem. They rotate the gun before they hit the magazine release. Now, as a left-handed shooter, I'm using my digital tip to hit that magazine release. I can reverse it over and use my thumb. Those of you that are right-handed are using your thumb. Not a big deal as long as the task is completed. My advice to you, in a way that you should practice your proficiency when it comes to reloading, like I said, do it every time like you mean it. Never treat this like an administrative situation. As I come off the gun, I want to start hitting that release before I rotate the gun in. Now the gun's in, it's in my workspace, if that's what you want to call it, I need to index my spare magazine. If you're not practicing your reloads from concealment, but you carry concealed, then you are in fact wrong. If you're not carrying a spare magazine, I highly encourage you to start thinking about it. Not because you're necessarily going to need the ammo, because remember, we already talked about those statistics, right? But because you don't want to be the person who the statistics don't apply to. At this point, I'm going to index my magazine. Bullets forward, into the gun. As I'm putting it into the gun, I'm rotating back towards my threat, my target, my the area in which I'm most likely being threatened. While I do that, I'm applying downward pressure on this release. Now, based on gun type as a left-handed shooter, I either have to use my digital tip or I can just put my finger up there. On the m and I got to use my digital tip. I'm not pressing down. What I'm going to do is force the gun up into the release. Just like that. The reason I do it that way, what I found with left-handed shooters, is they have a tendency to press down too soon. And that means they're going to close the slide on an empty chamber. Whereas doing it my way, the gun is not forced up into the slide release until the magazine has been seated. So there's no way, and again, accounting for a very, very, very small possibility, that I can have the slide go closed on an empty chamber. Now I see left-handed, or I see right-handed shooters do the same thing. They hit that release a little bit too soon, they come back out to target, and they experience a, uh, basically a failure to fire because they have an empty chamber. Most common malfunction on the handgun is going to be an empty chamber followed by a, ma a ammunition related malfunction such as just a failure to fire whereas a striker hits a primer and you don't get a bang. So that is my reload procedure. That is from slide lock. That's one, one way to reload the gun. The technique is no different for a right handed shooter. The only variation like I already said is going to be that slide release. So I'm aimed in on my threat. The gun at some point is going to let me know 
ran out of ammunition, so I get that springy trigger, which the M&P is going to do on a couple different conditions. So with this particular handgun, it might be good to visually verify in some way that you have, in fact, run out of ammunition. Then I'm going to hit the magazine with my thumb. Same thing. I'm going to try to start that release before I inboard the gun, because if I inboard the gun too fast and hit the release, the magazine is going to be very lethargic coming out of the gun, or you're going to have to do that weird shake. Indexing the magazine. As it goes in, I'm pushing down or I should say I'm not pushing down on the slide release. I'm just putting my thumb there. As the magazine goes into the gun, it forces it closed. I'm good to go. I have reloaded. Uh, again, nothing different except for the variations in how you release the slide. Before we go any further, gross versus fine motor skills. Some people like to slingshot. Um, I used to be among you. I used to be one of you. I used to, in fact, teach it. Uh, but based on my own research and just growing as an instructor and as a, a competency as a shooter, uh, I realized that it's, it's foolish to assume that I can't meet a standard without fully understanding what would prevent me from meeting that standard. So the general argument given for the slingshot or wrist rocket or whatever method you want to call it, basically instead of using the slide release, I'm going to go over the top or I'm going to inboard and, and rack the slide. So I'm using all the slide spring pressure uh, to chamber the round versus just hitting the slide release as most firearms are designed. The general argument given is you don't have fine motor skills in a gunfight, uh, so you shouldn't be trying to hit that little itty bitty slide release. Here's my biggest problem with that. Um, so this would be technically a fine motor skill, and that magazine release would be technically a fine motor skill. Activation of a light would be a fine motor skill. Um, there's a whole lot going on fine motor skill related before we even run out of ammunition. So how is it that I'd be able to, to work the trigger and then work the magazine release? Because if I'm going to reload, then I must have dropped the magazine, right? So that's two fine motor skills. One that is repeated, has re been repeated, a, uh, well to completely run out of ammunition, right? So that one fine motor skill on the trigger, if we're going under the, the layman's definition of fine motor skill, um, I've already completed a lot of fine motor skills, and then I run out of ammo. And then I use another fine motor skill to hit that magazine release. But at some point, for some reason, after that, I no longer have fine motor skills available to me. Like I have some kind of prescribed, it's like three wishes. I rub the gun, I get three fine motor skills, or just two. Um, this is not a magic lamp, and, and fine motor skill is not a wish. It's something that you either have or you don't. Uh, if you look into the physiology of how the human body uh, operates under stress, your sympathetic nervous system, you'll find that fine motor skills stu still do occur. I think one of the biggest problems we have is people's common misconception or po common misunderstanding with what exactly the fuck they're talking about. A gross motor skill is like a flipper. But is it? Because I've got two independent groups of, of fingers here. I've got a thumb and I've got my four fingers working together. So this is technically a fine motor skill, right? Single digit manipulation, maybe? Um, a fine motor skill is, by my definition, single digit manipulation. The trigger finger, single digit manipulation. Thumb or index finger hitting the magazine release, single digit manipulation. So if I can already do those single digit manipulations, and I think everybody can agree with me that using your finger to release a slide is probably a little bit easier than working the trigger, um, technique considered, and probably a little bit easier than hitting the magazine release, technique considered. So why go over the top? One, it does waste time. And I say waste because there's a more efficient way to accomplish the task. I do not say it takes more time, it actually wastes time. That's time that you could make up in other ways. And because we're talking about self-defense, time is very, very valuable. Um, distance equals time. Uh, if you've run out of ammunition and you're in a hurry to reload your gun, then you probably want those seconds, especially if you immediately need to put the gun back to work because that first magazine full of ammunition did not do the job that you wanted it to do. So my feeling on it is I do not agree with over the top. And like I said, I used to, um, but I've grown as an instructor. I've become more educated and I've seen um, damn near at this point, thousands of force on force evolutions, as well as actual uh, video of actual gunfights uh, between law enforcement citizens and things of that nature um, to be very, very confident in the fact of teaching the magazine release versus the old slingshot. So if you come to a Sage class and you do the slingshot thing, we're going to talk about it and we're going to see which one's going to be more efficient for you. Now, if that's your method and that's the one you're most comfortable with, then that's okay. Like that's, that's your personal decision. Just make sure you're making that decision knowledgeably. So the next reloading technique uh, requires a bit of an analogy. Um, I like to think of the handgun like uh, a car in the sense that the magazine is the gas tank. Uh, I have a fuel gauge, um, just like, you know, the gun has a fuel gauge. When it hits E, the slide's going to lock to the rear. Uh, but like a car, 
I've been driving it for a while, I intuitively know, especially if I, I know the car well, I drive it all the time, um, when it's about to run out of gas because I've been to, I've been through filling the car up for so long based on how long I've been driving it. Handgun's no different. If your carry gun is your EDC, say it's a Glock 19, a Glock 17, an M&P, God help you, an XD, uh, something like that, uh, you're going to run out of ammunition. If you shoot the gun and you practice a lot, you know when that's going to happen before the gun comes to slide block. You know when you're getting close to E is kind of my point. So if I've got a fully loaded firearm and I fire off a number of rounds that I'm probably not going to be able to account realistically, I shouldn't try just because you've got more important things going on in an actual use of force than trying to count rounds. But I have a pretty good idea of where I'm at. And this is where we get to that uh, sarcastic air quotes, slow on the gunfight reload, the tactical reload, if you will. I'm on the gun. Now at this point, maybe my threat goes to cover, maybe my threat goes to the ground, he's not an immediate threat. Maybe I'm able to get behind some cover or some concealment, or somehow I lose sight of my threat that I need to shoot at. So I'm not, I won't be shooting right now. Now I just drove for a little while. I'm not sure how long I drove, but rounds were expended, more than one. Um, I, have an, I have an idea that I did pull the trigger multiple times, and I don't know how much ammunition is left in this magazine. Now, the uh, quote-unquote tactical reload is there's a bunch of different ways to do it. The way I generally do it is I police my reload and I just swap. And then if I have the ability to retain this, I do. If I can't get it in a pocket for some reason, I'm just going to drop it and let it go because it's more important to get my hand back on the gun uh, for a more stable shooting platform. So that is the quintessential tactical reload. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, the way that I just did it is the fastest for me. I mean, you can also use like very specific, like, oh, I'm going to use the L method or I'm going to retain the magazine first. And that method, guys, will drop the magazine, retain it, and then put a mag in the gun, which is cool, except for that whole time that the gun's up there with only one round in it. And if you, certain models, older models of guns, some of them won't fire with the magazine removed. So you want to make that sweat switch as soon as possible. And the same amount of motion needs to take place. A magazine needs to come out and a magazine needs to go in. The less movement you have to do to accomplish that task is better. Um, now granted, if you have smaller hands, uh, it might not be wise to use the method that I'm using. And you'll notice I'm not doing the side-by-side -side L, uh, or the, the V, if you will. Um, that is a 1911 thing for single stack mags. That's not something I'm gonna teach to people who use double stack guns because not everybody's hands are gonna be able to accomplish that task. Getting back to the, getting back to the matter, whatever technique you use, count how many movements it takes you to do it. You can put it on a shot timer, however you want to do it, and find out which way is going to be most efficient and most reliable based on your hand size, gun size, how you carry, so on and so forth. So that is the, the quote unquote tactical reload. Um, it's a retention reload, but there's absolutely no reason at all that that is the only way you're going to reload because you're a thinking creature and you can identify a situation for what it is. So this is where we try to introduce a little more um, potential reality into the way we practice. Uh, we just did the lull in the gunfight reload, which, like I said at the beginning of the video, presupposes you know how long you have, or you have a good idea of how long you have, because identify to, I, I, in order to identify a lull, you have to understand that it's occurring. Um, if you don't know the very next moment you're need, gonna need to fire a round, you may not have any idea that you're in this quote unquote lull. So, the other reload method, it's a variation on the tactical reload, uh, is to just reload the gun. Uh, same analogy applies, the gun's going to start to run out of gas. Uh, I don't know, I don't want to get all the way to E. I don't want to go to slide lock if I can help it. I want to remove that step. So what I'm going to do is while I'm on the trigger, now at what point would that reload occur? That's up to you, but it's a good technique to have. Now, I don't know how many rounds I fired out of that magazine. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. So I've still got a good amount of ammo left. I have seven rounds left in this magazine. Now, what advantage is there in just dumping it to the ground and going straight to my full reloaded magazine? Time. That's the biggest advantage that you have. If you can give yourself more time to solve a situation, the better off you're going to be. Instead of fiddle screwing around trying to retain magazines when it's something that you, you have to be honest with yourself, are you practicing that enough? Because if you're not, then this might be a reload method that you definitely want to consider practicing because it may be the one that you end up doing anyway. That particular method for me is when I know the gun is going to be immediately needed in the next second, two seconds, three seconds, I want to get more ammo in it immediately. I did leave pretty good ammunition on the deck. 
This technique applies to situations where that would make sense. It does not apply to every situation. That's why the quote unquote tactical reload still exists. If I can retain a magazine, I will. If I do not have time to retain the magazine, I am just going to reload the gun. Finally, if you're, if you're isolating skills, uh, especially reloads, because that's you know what we're talking about, it's a good idea to try to come up with ways so you don't cheat yourself or you don't allow yourself to game the reload. Uh, some people, I just see them do it uh, if, you know, the rare occasions where I'm on an indoor gun range where there's a bunch of different shooters doing a bunch of different things, or I'm um, just talking about it with, with students that I've had and I ask them, uh, how do you practice this, how do you practice that? So, got a box of ammo. Um, let's say this is my carry gun and I've got, these are going to be my primary mags because it's a 19 size magazine. A lot of guys I know that carry 19, their spare magazine is a 17 size or 17 plus 3 or plus 5. Uh, I got my box of ammo. Good thing to do is just dump some rounds in your hand, you know, kind of kind of just mix them up whatever you're gonna do i don't know exactly how many is in there i'm pretty sure it's 20 just because i've done this so many times uh, but i'm sitting here and i'm talking to you or maybe i'm just going to be counting random numbers in my head and i'm just going to start putting ammunition in the gun uh, in the magazine i'm going to try do my very best to make sure that i don't know how many rounds i'm putting in the magazine which is kind of tough to do unless you can really break your concentration and just mindlessly reload max but what's more than that uh, spare magazine is going to be the same thing because I can work from spare to spare and back and forth. It doesn't have to be uh, carry magazines at all times. I can just work as many mags in there as I can. It's a good idea. Uh, for instance, if you do carry a 19 or you carry a compact gun, take as many of those flush magazines as you have. They usually come with two or three, maybe buy three or four more just for practice sake and so you have extra magazines. Most people I know don't really have any frets about picking up a mag here or there every chance that they get unless you buy HK because those magazines are like made out of gold or something as expensive as they are. So let's say for the sake of argument, these are all carry blank magazines. I have a good idea because I loaded them, but then I'm going to go ahead and mix them all up, kind of like my little three card Monty of, of ammunition there. And then I'm just going to go ahead, put one in the gun, holster up, grab one of the spares, put it in a pouch, and then go run the drill. Uh, once I've exhausted both, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it again, 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 again. Get yourself as many reps as you can and then reload your ammunition the same way. You'll find that with 100 rounds, you can get a great deal of reloading practice. With 50 rounds, you can get a great deal of reloading practice. The more magazines you have available to you, the less rounds you put in each. Uh, not only that, you're getting your good, you're getting, you're still being able to practice the general fundamentals of shooting, but you're also working in those real speed reloads from whatever conditions you want. You can practice slide, you can go to slide lock, or uh, when you are practicing for tactical reloads, I do encourage you to use a full magazine for that, just because if you only loaded two or three rounds, you're probably going to reach slide lock before uh, you would, through a process of a full magazine, actually do a tactical reload. So. This works really great for slide lock reloads. For tactical reloads, uh, it's a better idea to at least use a full carry mag. Um, as far as your reload magazine, it can have one round in it just to perform the chamber operation. And then you can literally swap the mag back in, grab another one, go back to your practice. That's my philosophy on reloads for the handgun, uh, both slide lock reload, tactical slash emergency reload. Uh, again, you can, terminology is not necessarily important as long as we understand what we're talking about. Um, we like to give things names. Problem is not everybody's gonna use the same name. Uh, so sometimes you got to explain to people what you want. And that's why I said there's two types, two ways to reload, but there's a variation on one of them. And that is, do I retain the magazine or do I just let it go to the deck, put a new mag in it? And that's going to be specifically based on the situation you find yourself in. It's good to know how to do both ways. It's good to practice both ways so you don't run into a mental hiccup in the moment where you need to do it. Um, like I said, it is unlikely for you to work to reload in a self-defense shooting based on statistics. Problem with statistics um, is... They're very, very constantly imperfect because no two gunfights are ever going to be the same. Everything's going to be anecdotal uh, based on the situation, um, the history of the situation, time, distance, uh, time of day, time of night, um, conditions in which the fight occurred, why the fight happened, all these other things. Uh, if I'm getting good solid hits on my threat and I get them fast, the chances of me needing that second magazine are slim. But there's no reason at all that I shouldn't top off. So if I do use my firearm and my threat goes to the ground and I identify the fact that he's the threat, he's the only threat, he's no longer a threat, he's either surrendered or he's become unconscious, I'm still going to top that gun off for the next few minutes or however long it takes for the situation to become safe, uh, just in case I need a full magazine. And that's why I said, even though you may not need that reload, always reload like you mean it. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.